out to the ball game. If you could have gone out to the ball game with Buck O'Neill, you would have seen a game you never saw before. Baseball was at once both a fist that beat him down and a shoulder that raised him up. But through Buck O'Neill's eyes, baseball was always grand. We knew everybody in Kansas City. Everybody in Kansas City knew us. They'd walk up to me, hello, Buck, how you doing? I'd say, hey, Joe, good to see you. From 1938 to 1955, O'Neill was a slick-fielding, good-hitting first baseman for the Kansas City Monarchs. People who know say they were the Yankees of the Negro League. O'Neill never took offense that his star shone only in a galaxy largely ignored. He was not going to be deterred by anger. He was not going to be deterred by bitterness in himself. He was going to go forward, and each day of his life was a gift to the rest of us. O'Neill was fond of saying he became an overnight sensation at 82 when Ken Burns' documentary on baseball aired on PBS. O'Neill told stories of the Negro Leagues and through them told a story of America. When the Monarchs in town or when the East-West game was on, they started church at 10 o'clock so they could get out an hour earlier so they could come to the ball game. All my life. O'Neill appeared at Cooperstown this summer on behalf of 18 Negro Leaguers who won a special election into the Hall of Fame this year. But O'Neill didn't make it. He fell one vote short. I think in some ways his heart was broken, and that was the end. The wind was out of his sails. If it was, Buck O'Neill never let it show. Don't you say it in the tears, man, because I'm, uh, I'm not going to the Hall of Famer, because I'm a Hall of Famer. Disappointing, the Hall of Fame didn't recognize that while he was alive. Tony Guida, CBS News, New York.